What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fadden, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through the first week one of the NFL season. It's very exciting. We will be doing multiple shows a week. We also will be going live. As of right now, the plan is 11 a.m. Eastern time on Sundays. And I'm ready to have a, a big football season. So it's nice to have football back, especially after a bad baseball month in, in August. And uh, I'm looking forward to this week. Sheets, any sort of overall thoughts on the, the season, the slate, anything before we get into the game by game? Yeah. Um, so for those of you that, that don't know, it's my usual rap at the beginning of the football season to say how much I hate football. And I hate playing DFS football among why? all the other sports. And every year, um, Bobby says, you "Why?" <laughs> and then I come up with some stupid reason. And I end up, then end up, and I end up winning, and yeah. I end up <laughs> cashing big. And and then I by by week seven, I change my mind. Um, but we're going to start off again with the same thing for no other reason, just um, just to keep the tradition alive. Um, but when I when I when I decided I'm going to be doing this football season. Is something I probably should have been doing more of. Um, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spread myself as too thin in my uh in my approach. In other words, I think last year, even when I was playing multiple teams, like sometimes I, I play as many as 40 lineups, um, I would I would play just too many games, like too many teams, too many variations, and didn't take enough stands, didn't go overweight on enough spots that I thought were, were significantly better than the others. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to be a little more concentrated uh, with, with my approach, but yet still, I think I'm going to, I'm going to end up playing more team, more, more lineups also. Um, so I'm probably going to end up being, I'm going to have like probably stronger cores, but I'm going to be probably, I'm going to be using Sabersim a little bit, you know, I'm going to probably get up to maybe 40 lineups this year in the Millie, in the Millie maker. Um, and I still don't know if I'm going to be playing those bigger buy-ins uh, in the football, but I, I might. I mean, I, I I moved up to the 333 last year. I didn't do like the wildcat or whatever it is, but I, moved, I think I played the 333 from time to time. I'm going to get back to doing that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to continuing to my uh, DFS growth and learning and, and hopefully put myself in a position to, to win the big one. I have to say that I had a good football season last year, but, in, in DraftKings, I was never really in contention for anything enormous, um, especially in the Millie Maker or anything. Like I, I grinded out stuff. I, you know, I chopped a couple of showdowns for a couple of thousand. I won Millie Maker, maybe I got like like fortieth or something like that. I had one one sweat in the FanDuel where all I needed was Devontae Adams to have a median performance, and I think I would have won that whole thing. Um, but that didn't work out. So overall, I mean, it was just, it was kind of like MME life. You know, I, 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 I won, I won, I won a Yahoo one for like 20, but in the DraftKings one, I, I wasn't really uh, in contention. I think a lot of that was that I just had too many, too many different variations. You know, I didn't, I didn't stay focused enough on the key games. And when you get focused on the key games and then you're right on them, then you have a better chance of, of, of getting the combinations right when you've diversified around. So that's, that's my sort of new year's resolution, my approach to the season. What about, what are you, what are you doing this year? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I think that I'm going to get a little wild and play some, you know, hunches earlier in the season. Um, I think that with the, with early weeks that people tend to pay up and down a lot because they want to speculate on some minimum receivers, things like that. So my early builds have all been mostly middling. Um, that's just one thing that I thought is just, trying, trying to do the middling thing. I'm also not going to be playing hardly ever. You you won't see me with the lineups without a quarterback that runs. For example, last year, Jalen hurts is a, as much as flawed as he is. The guy had, I believe 20 fantasy points in every single game he pitched. I'm sorry, every single game he played. And I think that, uh, that, that running upside, I mean, he, so he had more fantasy points than, than, a, than an incredible year out of Joe Burrow. Uh, I just think it's wrong in general to try to overly, pair up these these quarterbacks because you like the receivers so i mean you're going to see me with like two receiver stacks from teams and, and a, a skinny stack with my main stack like i'll play i'll play one receiver with uh with jalen hurts and then i'll play a two receivers from a cincinnati or something like that rather and try to play the rushing side up games that make well I, I you know what i think with the with the development of all these running quarterbacks i think that really has put a lot of pressure on the like you said, like the, the, the pure correlation, you know, approach to, to NFL, which people learn how to play before all these running quarterbacks just kind of came into the league, you know, and, right. and, and it seems so pure. You play a quarterback, you play these top two receivers, you run it back with the best receiver from the other team. And that's kind of what you have to play. Right. 
But right. when you have these quarterbacks that, that that generate so many of the points by themselves, mm-hmm. you know, it just it just kind of really throws a monkey wrench into the whole, you know, into the whole lineup construction model, you know, and, and it's a uh, and, and you're you're I don't want to say ahead of the game to try to like over over hype or whatever, but you've been you've been kind of uh anti pure stacking for longer than most people have. So you've probably been ahead of the curve on that. As a matter of fact, I you look back, it wasn't last year, but the year before you had some wild freaking lineup that almost won the millie maker that was just no, last like, year too last year i had two of them. last year that yeah. it was just like one quarterback and then you know you had you had, you had stacks but but they weren't paired with the quarterback you had the running quarterback and then you had like you know uh wide receivers and run backs without the quarterbacks attached to them right right and that's and that's something that i'm definitely considering doing again i should correct myself on jalen hurts he did have some games under 20 but depends on what scoring system you use but he, he actually had a couple but overall my point was just that you take a guy who's sort of seemed like he struggled all year versus a guy in burrow who had a massive season and he actually outscored him because you could say it's flawed but that's just the way that the scoring is done running just means too much so with that said sheets let's jump into it let's uh call up game by game. And I'm going to probably suggest this week one more stacks and more games to target than I normally would, because I think that there's worth there's, I mean, yeah, there's the $5 as I'm probably going to be maxing that out, obviously for a million. Um, and I also think that you know, we should be speculating it's early in the season. And, and I think we should get, we should, we should try a few things that are a little bit, maybe seem a little bit thin. Um, with that said, the other thing I would, the other thing I should say was, as we go through these game by games, I have to do, I want to say a little better job, but, with, with the delivery of the content. Cause I usually, I mean, I, th- th- there might be like some dead air because when I want, don't want to play anybody from a game, I usually don't have too much to say about them, but I want to mm-hmm. at least go over the top plays maybe from that game in case you guys didn't want to play them, mm-hmm. but that'll be a more, um, more development, you know, like you guys give us more input on what you guys like to see. And I'll, uh, you know, well, I'll try to adjust to that. Yep. Makes sense to me. Um, all right, well, let's start it off with uh, with with uh, the Philly Detroit the game that I actually. This is a game I do like. Um, I, I, I mentioned I mean, I'm going to play a lot of Philly this year in general. It's a little trickier with AJ Brown there now, which you could just say, okay, just play AJ Brown. That's and that's totally legitimate. That maybe is the right thing to do. Um, but uh, but I do like AJ Brown and, and Dallas Goddard, uh, one or both paired with Hertz. And my favorite run back on the other side is going to be Swift uh, followed by St. Brown. And I think all of those are viable. I don't think it's a great spot to target St. Brown just from a matchup standpoint, but I kind of want exposure to this game. So it's probably mostly going to be Swift and the, uh, and the Philly side of the offense, but I do like this game quite a bit. Right. So I have just to give you guys a heads up. I have like four or five games that I like significantly more than the others. And Mm -hmm. this is, this is actually one of them. Um, and two of the names that you mentioned are two, I mean, in my world, I mean, not getting too much into the, the depth and all, all, all the stats, but I'm sure it bears this out. I mean, I think AJ Brown is just like a legit freaking stud. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. Guys, one of those guys, he's like become, in my opinion, one of those unguardable guys. Um, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. Um, as you guys probably know, I, mean, I do a lot of survivor pool stuff. So. Um, when you do a lot of survivor pool stuff, you unfortunately have to end up sweating and watching like terrible teams all year because you're always rooting against them. So I, I watched more Detroit Lions games last year than probably anybody on the face of the earth. And this is before they were part of the the hard knocks or whatever. This 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 St. Brown from Detroit is the freaking truth. Okay, like this guy is really really good, and he, if I'm not mistaken, had like basically 12 targets a game coming down the stretch. The oh yeah. Season. Every game was double digit targets every Yeah. And, and so um, these two guys, I think could put on kind of a show in this game in the dome with the good weather and all that stuff. Um, I guess what you're getting at, I didn't even think about the matchup. I guess there's some like stud Philadelphia safety, I suppose. I have no idea. No, Philadelphia is loaded. Um, and they, well, they got, well, they have, what's his name now? Um, uh, they got from, but they got Lattimore, right? Um a Lattimore guy. Uh, is that um, not right about that? I don't know. I think, but, I think but, I'm right but, about it. I got to double check my my notes because I'm getting. Uh, but 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 you got Swift. You got you got you got St. Brown, and you have like you said AJ Brown and Goddard on the other side. I, think I was wrong. About and, it. You know, and I and I have really have no problem playing. I mean, this is not again. This is kind of goes against what you're saying. Um, but I have no problem playing Goff. I have no problem obviously playing Hurts. And this is one of the games that I'm going to be targeting. 
Yeah, I think I got totally confused there with with the cornerbacks, but I know that they their corners are loaded. I've I've listened to enough podcasts and football over the last while to to know that. But I but I but I do hear you like with the St. Brown thing, and I, I agree with what you said about about AJ Brown. The only thing I want to throw out there is I'm not sure he's the best receiver on this team just because he's one of the best receivers in the NFL. Devontae Smith is in his you know coming off of his rookie year after winning the Heisman, and he's a monster. Um, so both of those guys would be in play for me. Uh, strongly and then maybe it takes a little bit of goddard's upside out but i, I still really like God, goddard here um it's so really I, I really like this game so it feels like we're on the same page there when and i don't think you're getting i don't have anybody in this game projected for double digit ownership so or right around there maybe with swift but that's pretty much it so i i like this game to target i think i think we're in a good spot um all right let's jump over to the next one uh Baltimore and, and the Jets. Uh, my my prediction this year, uh, I've been pretty good with my early season predictions. I, I do have uh, Baltimore and KC in the AFC championship game, and I have Baltimore winning. Uh, I actually think Baltimore is le- legitimately, uh, this is the year if they're healthy, that they win the Super Bowl. Uh, that's my take. I don't see this game being especially competitive. I think that Rashad Bateman's going to have a monster season. I think... You should throw out last year's numbers about Baltimore's defense, offense, everything, because they were basically half of their players didn't play in all the games and everybody had COVID a million times because they wouldn't get vaccinated. That's not shouldn't happen again this year. Um, I don't think I'm interested in anything from the Jets. I don't mind. I guess if you want to gamble on Elijah Moore or Corey Davis. Go ahead. I personally uh, just like Baltimore as a team. And I think that the, my favorite play in this game I guess might be Baltimore's defense, but I don't even think I necessarily need to go spend that much. So I'm, I'm not all that interested in this game for, for, for DFS purposes. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably be rooting for the jets because I would imagine 20, 25% of the survivor pool people will be taking Baltimore in this spot. Mm-hmm. So I'll be rooting against the jets. I mean, I'll be rooting for the jets, but from a DFS perspective, uh, I, 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 I don't have, a, I don't have a thing to offer in this game. Um, you got Joe, is Joe Flacco. You play. I, I, it's, He's it's, supposed it's, to be starting. Yeah. That's a disaster. I mean, <laughs> I, I think that you know, look. You want to play ball? What's Baltimore's? Is Baltimore? Uh, what's their defense? What's their what's their price? Four thousand or something? Four thousand. Yeah. I mean, it feels like a pretty good. I mean, I, it does feel like the, their defense is a, is definitely in play here. Yeah, but you know, I don't know. They'll probably give that running back some run. The uh, the Jets. They have, they have the both running. The, the thing is, they they have a, a few running backs they're the going to use. The Brees Hall is supposed to be pretty good. Um. But yeah, I, 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 I have nothing. Yeah. I think that, you know, you could certainly argue, I'm just curious where the ownership goes. I'm just going to take a quick look at that because I am curious what happens with guys like uh, Dobbins here. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. No, nobody's, I don't know who is, who are they going to like, I need to do a little more digging onto their, the Baltimore defense for sure. Um is, I mean, is it really going to be Mike Davis getting all the care? I don't know. Like, it doesn't feel like a good play. I just, I think this is game is mostly a stay away with the exception of, I do like the Baltimore defense, I guess. All right. Um, next we have New Orleans, Atlanta. Uh, New Orleans is another team. I think is, uh, here's my other prediction for the season as I'll say them as we go along. Um, I think New Orleans wins that division. I don't, I hit a Tampa Bay. Uh, I feel really weird betting on a Dennis Allen coach team. But I believe this defense is arguably the best defense in football. You have plenty of weapons back. We don't. I don't know what we're what we're doing with Mike Thomas. Is we're used to paying nine k for this guy. We don't know where, what what form he's in. He didn't get his injury taken care of till late. We we don't we don't know. Uh, he's supposed to start, but we don't know exactly how what where he's at. But he's fifty seven hundred. Um, I, I think there's a lot of spots in this game you can target for fantasy. Even though I, I like, I'm a little worried that New Orleans just smashes them with their defense. And they play a little more conservative style, but Kyle Pitts, uh, Kyle Pitts being my favorite for Atlanta, uh, Mike Thomas being my favorite from New Orleans. I think Jar- Jarvis Landry will have a fine season, but Kamara, Kamara is the main. Kamara, Thomas, and Pitts are the main guys here for me. Yeah, so I um, I don't really have too much interest I, I, in this game. I. I because, like you said, I just don't see where the points are going to come from uh, to keep the game close on the Atlanta side. Uh, I think that one thing I will say is that for all, all the DFS people who have been whining and crying and pleading and, and you know, and, and just bitching about, oh, when, when is J- Jameis Winston finally going to get a chance or whatever? Okay, good luck. You know what I mean? You finally get your shot, you know? Yeah. Now I don't want to hear it when he throws like seven interceptions a game. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. I, 
I just don't want to hear it anymore. You know, I, well, how could this guy start over Jameis Winston? How can this guy start over Jameis Winston? Or Jameis Winston sucks. Okay. I don't want to hear it. Maybe, but maybe, like you said, he's probably good for fantasy because he like loves to throw the ball into wherever, you know, and, 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 and maybe get some touchdowns. But I think that, that this particular game, um, is just going to be kind of a, like a, a new Orleans defense flex type of game, you know, and, and maybe they get if Michael if listen to Michael Thomas is in, in form whatever they want to get him a touchdown just to get him back in, in the groove you know you get you know, that's fine um I don't think Kamara you know he's always been muddled. It seems like we talk about this in baseball right like how good is a guy in sports if he's never going to be able uh, healthy enough to play right mm-hmm. I always feel as though Kamara's not playing you know he, he could be uh, maybe it's an illusion but I think that he's not going to be like that workhorse guy that's going to just like get like a million carries to close out games, you know, like because right. they got to protect this guy. Right? So um, he'll get his targets. He'll get his, you know, I think he's one of the better running backs on the slate, I suppose. Um, but as far as like stacking the game up or whatever, I just don't see where the action is coming from. Although I will say that we can continue to, to, to play Cordell Patterson until further notice. Right. I mean, we had a lot of luck playing him when nobody played him last year. Yep. And and he's got to leave very versatile. He could do a lot of things. And in a, in a, in a team that's kind of starved for for Anything. for for <laughs> firepower, right? Um, you know, what do they got? Mitch Trubisky, a quarterback, and you know, the best receiver is a tight end, right? Uh, so, uh, it's Kyle Pitts, right? So, so it's um, you've got Mariota quarterback. Oh, oh Mariota's quarterback. Okay. Yeah. Who's Trubisky? Oh, Trubisky. I am throwing uh, Mariota into a couple of of lineups in the five dollar this week, just to say the truth. Um, <laughs> wait, no, no, Trubisky. He was. Where was he? He He's was in on, Pittsburgh. Uh, he is now a Pittsburgh. Right. Um. So in any case, uh, I'm. I, I don't think I'm going to get to too much. Maybe, maybe Kamara is a decent play. Um. But that's pretty much all. I think. Yeah, and I, I do worry even with Kamara because I think that they're going to play him, you know, two downs. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot. I think you're going to still, still see Ingram uh, get the ball there. They don't want to beat up Kamara's body this early in the season, especially if the game they have in hand, which, would, you know, is still a long ways away. But um, I think it's definitely possible. All right. New England and – that's right, right? You have New England next? New England, Miami. All right, so here I'll get some – Go. I guess I'll do this one because I don't have too much on this, except I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll go on narrative street for, for, for just a minute with this one. So no, nobody here projects pretty well for me at all, but I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw one thing in there. If you believe the, um the idea that what Bill Belichick does with New England is do everything the power to bracket and lock down the opposing, you know, best player on the other team. If you, if you, if you buy into that, you could probably do well by playing Waddle for Miami. Okay. Like if they, if he decides that Terry kill is just not going to beat him for like, a, for like 300 yards and like a zillion touchdowns or whatever. And they decide to double team him and, and to pass him off in zones and stuff like that. Then maybe Waddle who was really good last year. Um, maybe he could have a good game, uh, a particularly good game for Miami. Um, that's pretty much all I have in this game. Yeah, I think you could throw, get it a little. I think Gasecki would be the the next priority for me if I if I thought they were actually yeah. going to climb downhill. I still do like Hill, um, and I don't mind if you want if people want to play Tua. Um, I I am on the Tua. There's the people who hate Tua and the people who think he's great. I, I think his price is a little too high, and I you know I don't love trying to target against New England. I think New England is much worse than they than people think this year, and I think Miami's probably a little better than people think. Um, so I, I, I'm on, I'm on a little bit of Hill, a little bit of Gusecki. I, the, my issue with the running backs in this game is just that they're all, I like all of them in general, and I don't know which way the carries are going to break down between Stevenson and Harris and between Edmonds and Mostert. So I, I, I don't have a great feel for it. And I probably just end up avoiding the running backs, even though I like, I think I could see one of these guys having a big game. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. Um, Boy, uh, <laughs> I mean, look, it, it's going to be raining. It doesn't look like great weather. I, I, I do like the uh, the defense against Trubisky anytime it's available, and that is probably going to be my favorite part of this game, which feels really weird to say because I am the way I did really well last year was the problem with the defense is that they're forty four hundred and it's a lot. Um, but I, I I don't know. I, I, I think this could be a, just a, a Joe Mixon 
um, Joe Mixon defense game for, uh, for Cincinnati. I don't think they're going to need to go crazy throwing it. Pittsburgh's defense is not bad at all. Um, which kind of argues that if this game is close, maybe all these receivers are, are in play. I just don't know where I want to go. You could obviously argue for Jamar chase at 8,200. I just think I'm probably going to end up spending down on receivers a little bit more this week. And I'm, I don't think I'm going to end up with a ton of these guys, but I, I certainly don't mind if you do, it's just not for me. Right. So this is, um, this is a, this is, I think is an interesting game. I, I want to throw, I want to just throw just one thing out there. Just, 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 just for the hell of it. I don't even know what, what I'm going to do with the answer with this information, but is, is Ben Roethlisberger from last year to Mitch Trubisky, even a downgrade? Well, I don't, I mean, probably that doesn't matter is the answer. Okay. I, mean, I, I was just, I was just saying. They're know. the two guys we, we want to target defenses against. So I would, I would, I would, I would okay. still do it. Um, because, because I mean, the Pittsburgh does have receivers, you know, they have they, receivers, they do- they've got a defense, they've got a great running back. Um, and, and, and yeah, it wouldn't shock me against the, the Bengals if Trubisky was okay, but it's like, like it, Trubisky should be the guy who's like at 5k this week, not at 6,400. He does have the chance to have put up games. He's going to have some fantasy games and this might be one of them. I just personally am not that interested in it. Yeah. The, the other thing I would say um, is you touched on uh, Najee Harris a little bit. Um, I think he's, he's pretty reasonable. Uh, I have him as one of the better running back plays on the slate actually. Mm-hmm. Um well, he's not up. I mean, he's not like at the top top, but I have him, and he's certainly not as good of a play as Mixon. Um, but I it certainly feel in GPPs, he could cer- you could certainly play him a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you know, listen, Tr- the Trubisky, you know, you want to give him. Uh, I actually do like Najee's some- price. I was looking at What's Fanduel that? pricing. I was looking at Fanduel pricing by accident before. Najee's price does make me a little bit interested in him. Yeah, and um, I, and and you know, one thing that used to be the case i don't know if it's anymore but 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 teams that 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 lose the super bowl tend to come out flat in in their first game now it's a tough game to come out flat right because you're at home and it's freaking pittsburgh so if you you come out flat in a game like this against kind of a kind of a down pittsburgh team you know what i mean like then i don't know what to tell you but i i will say this and this this could actually make a case for this game being kind of sneaky is that I don't know what's the spread seven? It's got to be something like that, right? It's it's actually um, not that bad. It's only um, it's only six and a half. Oh, six and a half, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I personally think Mike Tomlin is like one of the worst like in game coaches. Like you really hate America. Mike Tomlin. I like Mike Tomlin, but I understand. right. But but hold on, but hold on. Right, I think he doesn't know. I I, I really don't like his in game coaching. I don't like some of his, his analytic decision making. But one thing about this Mike Tomlin, his dudes always freaking play for him i mean you never get a flat pittsburgh team on the freaking field okay and this is just feels like that freaking type of game where he's like okay i freaking excuse me i freaking lost roethlisberger i'm going into this freaking cincinnati there they think that the the kings of the freaking world they were in the super bowl we're on the road no one's expecting anything but i don't know if their team's good enough but they're certainly not going to come out flat and they're going to put out effort and if you got a team like that putting out effort against a team like Cincinnati, who might very well might be leaving their 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 clippings a little bit and and might be a little bit flat in this spot, maybe um, from a physical perspective, I think this game can be close. And if you get a game that's close with a bu- with a bunch of guys that can score, um, I I think this game can can, can do something. You know, I think that the Chase and all these all these Bengals can do stuff, and and Mixon can have a big game, and and um. And Deontay Johnson could have a big game for Pittsburgh and Harris. So I think this game could be uh could be uh could be sneaking out. But again, the other way the game that could play out is, you know, like you said, the Nixon uh Cincinnati defense to the hoop. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. like, like 24 to nothing, have it have a nice, have a nice time, Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Like and that's possible too. I don't know, but I just I've just never seen that type of result out of a Tomlin team, you know? Mm-hmm. So so that's that's kind of where I'm at in this game. Yeah, and and I and I want to say that even if you do like Cincinnati to beat him badly, it still doesn't take Najee Harris out of the picture. He can get, I mean, right. he could end up with you know a a ten target game. He had a nineteen target game last year. I mean, if they get, if they're down big, I think you could see a lot, of, especially the dump offs in the rain, um, is something that I would look to. So I, I like the running backs in this one, but um, that that's mostly where I am where I'm at. Um, Indy Houston, I think this is another big spread here. Uh, uh let's see what i've got here sorry it's hard to scroll around because all the games start at the same time um i i like uh i like indy 
to 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 win this game pretty handily. And it's the natural, do we play Taylor with the Colts defense? Um, I think honestly, probably not for me at the at the prices, but I really like Michael Pittman. And that is a guy who I'm going to prioritize this week uh, and this season in general. So I am on the Michael Pittman and in my middling builds, like I like I, which is going to be most of my builds. Um, and, and look, I do like Taylor. I just don't think I like him quite as much. I mean, 9,100 is a lot to pay for a running back, um, especially when they have Naheem Hines there. And do you want to, especially if this game gets out of hand, do you want to go crazy the first week and, run Taylor into the ground, or is this the year you want to let Taylor lead the league in rushing? It's it's hard for me to know. I do like Taylor. I just think the price is a little bit higher than I, than I'm desperate to play here. How about you? Uh, for this one? Yeah. So first of all, I guess, I guess I should have said this in our, in our intro to the, to the whole season, you know, in my, in my Twitter feeds, there's probably more like fantasy football uh, people in there than, than I, than I thought. I mean, I got a lot of people, fantasy football uh, people in my overall Twitter feed, and I will say uh, it's it, it is it is a little intimidating to me to hear all of the, the the work that that so many people put in to 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 between season long and best ball, which between you and me, Bobby, I hate to admit this, I don't even know the freaking rules. I don't even know what it is, and and and. It's all over the place. Like it's like billions of dollars are being put into best ball this year. That's all people talk about. Absolutely. I have no idea what it is. I mean, I know what it is, but I, I, it, it, it reminds me of when everybody freaking got into crypto and NFTs. And I'm like, what the hell is this crap? I don't even want a part of it. And by the time I realized what it is, it's too late, you know, whatever. Right, right, right. Like, um, but I don't, but I'm only hoping that people are putting so much work into the best ball, they forget to be DFS. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, I bring that up for a reason. I mean, all the different breakdowns and all the people talking about all the different metrics. One thing that I have discovered from all of the consensus is that Michael Pittman is in a really good spot this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, apparently the, the addition to Matt Ryan, to his, uh, to his profile um, really, really helps him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be a uh, pretty, a uh, pretty good play at this price forever. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's going to be this price forever, but, um, Agreed. So I agree with you. I, I I have Pittman as one of the best, if not the best, you know, given price and everything like that, like tight end plays, excuse me, wide receiver plays on the whole slate. So, mm -hmm. so I like that. Um, I didn't quite like it enough. I mean, I agree. I, I didn't think the game is going to be the type that is going to generate a lot of points for the Houston side. Otherwise I would say, you know, you can play Pittman and then Brandon cooks, for example, on the Houston side. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, Houston was another team I watched a little bit last year because I was fading them in Survivor, and they, 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 they show flashes from time to time of being not that bad. Um, but I think this is, I, you know, I do think they probably get try to get Pittman a touchdown. I think that they get Taylor a touchdown. I don't think that either of them get three touchdowns. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think Pittman's a pretty, a pretty. I think Pittman's a strong player. I think they want to get Ryan. If, if listen, it's not like. Listen, Houston gets paid too. It's not as if like everybody's conspiring to get these people touchdowns, right? Um, but it would be nice for Indianapolis to get Ryan off to a good start, right? So I would, I would, you know, he'll probably spray it around a little bit, but then again, they'll have a balance attack with Taylor. I think, I think Taylor is someone I'm not going to pay 9100 for. Um, I'd rather just, you know, take McCaffrey at 8500 if I'm going to do that. Um, and we'll get to him later, obviously. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's it's going to be probably Pittman and pass for the rest. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's that's most of my thoughts too. But I really do like Pittman, and and again, Taylor is just secondary for me just because of the pricing. And I think there's other running backs that can put up similar numbers that are a lot cheaper. So Carson Wentz, the return of Carson Wentz uh, in Washington against Jacksonville. I think there's a lot of, of kind of funny plays you can play here. And I just don't think I want to play any of them. Um, th th this is a, this is a game that um, you're going to, I think that this is going to be everybody's sneaky game. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm not doing it. I mean, listen, I, I, I played, I played just as much Terry McLaurin as anybody on the face of the earth, right? Played every single, and, and, I don't know. I, I guess it's not the worst play in the world. But aside from that, 
look, Travis Etienne, I, I guess you can make a case for this. It just, it just, it just feels to me like a, just a stupid defensive game. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just not going to get there. What about you? Uh, really, Antonio Gibson's one of my favorite plays in the slate. Um, maybe my favorite play on the slate. So uh, I will be all over Antonio Gibson at 5,800. And I have no problem with Terry McLaurin either. Uh, I, I also think I could see this game going sneaky. The, the weird play who I have here is I, I think both Christian Kirk and Marvin Jones are in play here. I expect a much better year out of Trevor Lawrence. Um, not great weather for this game for what it's worth looking like at least right now. Um, but I, I have interest in the, and definitely my, my favorite would probably be the, you know, again, it's, Probably the one of the top defense. I, I like the 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 Jags. Uh, sorry, the the Washington D. Even with all the stuff I said about Trevor Lawrence, I like the Washington D. Paired with Pittman at a cheap price, and I think that if that hits, you're in great shape and you've saved a lot of money. So that's that's what I've got as my priorities here, and I think it's one going to be one of my priorities for the whole slate. I like I like I like Washington at twenty five hundred. Um, the defense. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think again you pair it naturally with Gibson, and it makes a lot of sense. All right, uh, San Francisco, Chicago. Uh, this... <laughs> Just pass. I mean, what, 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 are, you, what, are, we what are we doing here? <laughs> like, um, and what, wait, what, take a shot with Mooney or something like that? I mean, what do you, what do you, or Ayuk for, I mean. I think Trey Lance is probably too cheap for what kind of fantasy upside he has. Um, is he even starting? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just, just that. He, 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 uh, he went my, I have a guy I know who, who bets really big on, on player props for football seasons and stuff like, like that, but he bet on Trey Lance to win the MVP at like a hundred to one. I believe now he's like 40 to one. So he's already doubled up basically. Um, I, I don't see that the MVP thing. I do think that San Francisco is such a creative team. It's always like, and it's always very hard to pick, you know, what, yeah. what you're going to do. If Debo plays here, I would say that I think that that's, Interesting. And I, and I'm always interested a little bit in IU. They just have, they can spread it around with different guys. Um, I think Eli Mitchell is, is certainly viable. Like what are they going to do? Run use check out there for a bunch of play. I, I don't know. I think he's viable at 5,400. Um, but I, uh, again, he just fits in with a bunch of these other guys that I like in that price range that are sort of my middling build. And that's basically what I have for this game is Eli Mitchell. And then again, we were talking about defenses. I think San Francisco, they're going to be expensive, but they're another one that's really strong. I don't, I just can't get to anything on the Bears side in this one, uh, personally. All right. So, what kind of a narrative guy are you? What's that? What kind of a narrative guy are you in football? Oh, here we go with the Cleveland thing. It depends <laughs> on the guys. Um, as much as, as Baker's in a better spot, uh, and, and he's going to put up some numbers in certain games this year. And he's, this could very well be one of them, by the way. Um, I don't think I have it in me to prioritize that. <laughs> um quite Dude, i don't know this guy this guy's a freaking psycho i you don't think that he he's, he's playing freaking cleveland i i, I don't know man i i, I don't mean, know either I, 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 think, I mean like i don't know i, I think they know. get after him a lot <laughs> um carolina does you know yeah i i do like nick chubb in this game um and even if you're playing baker like so it's baker dj Moore, right like then maybe and McCaffrey. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm sort of bad on the same page again, but I, like, I think I just like the running backs in this game. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to do it. I, I'm going to have, I'm just going to have to do it. I'm sorry. McCaffrey? No, no, Mayfield. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you give a natural run back. I just, yeah, I mean, sure. run, run, back, run back. I mean, oh, I don't need a run back. <laughs> well, no, but you would though. I think that Chubb is a pretty reasonable run back. He's, I think he's a really strong play actually, um, especially with who knows what's going to happen with Kareem Hunt wanting to be traded and all that. I think Chubb has got a shot to lead the league in rushing. Is, 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 and Amari, Amari Cooper's on the Browns. Yep. Is he not a? Is he he he's not a good run back? Sure, if you think that they're they're going to be pat throwing the ball that much. Um, I, I'm I play a lot of you know you're playing the narrative of how the game flow goes in my opinion um but I think he's yeah he's legitimate um I think Christian McCaffrey is going to be really popular and I think he's fine um especially with Baker there they might have to dump the ball down a lot <laughs> like I don't know so I, I think McCaffrey's McCaffrey's a solid play here um and so is Chubb I, I like both these running backs 
but I, I'm not that interested. I mean, is it Amari Cooper? Why would it be Amari Cooper? I guess, well, no, I guess, I mean, like if I had to pick one of Amari Cooper or DJ Moore, I think, first of all, I think DJ Moore is every bit of, uh, basically every bit of this receiver that he, that, that uh, Cooper is. I don't think there is a huge gap there. Um, yeah, but isn't, isn't DJ Moore on, on Carolina? Yeah. So if you're playing Baker, you have to play DJ Moore with him. And then your run back for me would be the running back, but I, I don't mind if you want to take Cooper as the run back. I think Cooper's fine. Okay. I just, I'm not excited about it. All right. Uh, we move on to the next one, which is the Jets. Your sorry, the Giants. Oh, I, your Giants. At no, I, I have, I have, I have uh, Green Bay, Minnesota. Oh, do you? Okay, sorry, my bad. Uh, Green Bay, Minnesota. Excuse me. Um, Jeet, all right. Why don't you start this one off? Because I jumped to the wrong game. So, just Justin Jefferson is um, have him as one of the top, if not the top, wide receiver on uh, on the slate. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, and then you have, I guess you could play Cousins along with him. Um, Dalvin Cook, I don't really see. Um, so for me, Justin Jefferson, Cousins, I didn't see much to the Green Bay except for, I don't know, uh, Aaron Jones, 6,700. Is he okay? I have him. I have him basically him and Cook very, very similar. I have Aaron Jones and Cook similar, but I have them below like other running backs that I already talked about. I have them below Najee Harris, I have them below Swift, I have them below Kamara, below uh, guys we haven't talked about yet. So I don't know. It's uh, I'm probably uh, either Jefferson or not a lot in this game for me, actually. Yeah, I, I, I love both receivers for Minnesota. Um, they're going to be popular. I, I feel in's my preferred one. Uh, just the pricing, it just, it fits in perfectly with what you want to do. And then I, I will have a ton of also in this game, uh, Alan Lazard. Uh, I do believe in the talent level there and Rogers has got to throw it to somebody and it's not going to be spread out to everybody. He does do that sometimes, but, uh, I, I, I like, I like Lazard. Um, and if I'm not playing Lazard, I'm going to throw Cobb in to a good portion of lineups as a cheap, op cheap option. Cause, uh, it's in a dome, it's Rogers in a dome and, one of these guys could easily end up with two or three touchdowns and I don't want to miss out on that uh, with a big game. So, and what should be a very competitive game uh, too, for what it's worth. Um, I think uh, Tanyan also is in play. I, I think it's a good game environment. Irv Smith is going to show up as being one of the better plays for value on the slate at, at tight end for Minnesota. So I, I'm just, I mean, all of Minnesota's receiving core is, is low, is extremely popular. Um and yet I don't, I don't, uh, I don't want to, I don't find myself wanting to play Kirk Cousins, even though he's going to be really, really popular. That's where I'm at. So we're actually a little bit different on that. You're, you're, you're good. It's good that you're, cause you're different than the field. I think that is, this is the game where people are going to focus oh, really? on. And, and if you avoid it, that's then you're, yeah. you know, you're definitely doing something a little bit different. All right. Let's talk about uh, the next one, which you have as, okay. So ten, uh, the giants and in, in Tennessee, Sheets, are you doing anything with this game? Yeah, I might. Um, so I, I don't think I'm going to play Derrick Henry. Um, I have him below guys like uh, – I have. well, first of all, I have him below Mixon. I have him below McCaffrey. I have him below Taylor. And I have I have Taylor just kind of as a similar type of profile, right, to Henry. Just that he's going to get – you know, he's going to get the work, you know, and, and – uh, and but the Taylor actually has a chance to get a target or two, you know. Um, so I, I don't prefer Henry here. Uh, I, I actually might play Barkley in this game. Um, I, I, he hasn't been healthy in a long time. Um, and God forbid he actually is healthy and gets a chance for a real season. Um, I, I, I don't mind that. So, uh, that would be my kind of play in this game is to play some, some, uh, some Charles Barkley, some, uh, some Saquon, some Saquon Barkley. Uh, everything else in this game is pretty. I, I mean, it seems pretty fishy for me. It's like so funny. I, I mean, Robert Woods is on Tennessee now, um, trying to replace not, not trying to replace uh, uh, yeah AJ Brown whatever. Yeah. And then you know you'll get you'll get some some hype out of uh, Kadarius Tony. Um, if if he ends up like really popular, I would fade that. Um, I, I think I think it's until further notice. I think they gotta like let Barkley kind of try to carry the team um, until, until further notice. So I, I think Barkley's going to get his chances and um, Tennessee. I, I don't know. I'm, they're, they're projecting them for kind of a down year this year. 
Um, they're really, really well coached. So, you know, they predicted it uh, last year too. And it didn't, I mean, they let, had the best record in the AFC. They, they sure did. Um, so I don't know. I, I don't want to play Henry. I don't really want to play much of the offense in Tennessee. Uh, if anything, I think I'll play some Charles Burke. I mean, some Charles Burke. I did again. I mean, some uh, I mean, Saquon Barkley. I think you did it on purpose that time. Um, I'm into the Barkley thing myself. Uh, I like the price. He, he's another one of these guys who I'll be mixing in again, along with the, you know, the Chubb, Najee, Mixon, Gibson. I, I like all these guys. It seems likely I'm going to end up with a running back in my flex on week one. Um, and yeah, I, I, uh, I think this, you know, this, I, I think this is a weird spot for the giants because every receiver is so cheap. You don't, you just need one guy. Like, I mean, one of these guys should have a game here. Um, I just can't figure out what, wh who it is. Um, Tony Robinson, Galladay, all completely in play for me. I know Galladay was terrible after being there, but then you also end up with Will Sterling Shepard play. If he does, that sort of knocks these guys down. But I think that Robinson, Tony and Galladay are all in play. So I'll just stick with the Giants receiving core. And I am not very interested in anything on Tennessee. Uh, the only thing is I probably will sprinkle in a little bit of Derrick Henry. It's a little funny, maybe even it's early in the season. And then we know that he always eats, eats later in the season. But it's a little funny that he's the same price issues as, as McCaffrey and that he's going to be significantly lower owned. So I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I just prefer these mid-tier running backs to the spending all the way up. So needless to say, by the way, I mean, if you do play Philadelphia, Detroit, or like something from that early slate, I mean, between the the the, the Green Bay Minnesota game, which you say is going to get some ownership, and these last two games, I mean, just don't don't be counting your money oh, <laughs> after the one after the one p.m. games. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I mean, you look at these last two games. I mean, this is. I mean, this is this is a lot of. Uh, it's a lot of skill positions, a uh, lot of lot of opportunities for fantasy points, and um, I guess we'll start with the first one. I, I, you have uh, Vegas uh, Chargers. I, I, I'm into all of it. You know, Herbert Carr, Eckler, uh, even jo Josh Jacobs, and then Devonte Adams is on Vegas now. And then these all the same dudes from the Chargers, uh, Keenan Allen, Williams is. I presume that Darren Waller is still on, on, on Las Vegas. He's yeah. questionable, but he'll play, you know? So this is a, it's a lot of skill positions out here with, with defenses that, that, that give up points. Um, uh, this is obviously a, a main, a main game. Yeah. Th th so that's, that's the thing that I find in this game. But then when I go through each play, each position and each, each thing, it just makes me go, okay, well, if I'm not stacking this game, do I really even want to be playing this game? Because I don't think that these guys need to go off of by any means. They're all priced pretty efficiently. Um, I think that uh, Renfro would be my preferred option at receiver over Adams. I, I think it's silly for us to assume that Adams will get the exact same workload that he had. Maybe not. Maybe this week he will. But I'm saying for the season that he did in, in Green Bay. Um, I, I think that Eckler is a good play. But we just mentioned other, you know, McCaffrey and 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 uh, and yeah. Derrick Henry in the same price range. Uh, Jonathan Taylor just a little bit above. I, I just personally, I, I don't really want to prioritize. The only thing that I've got from this game that, that I could see maybe being a priority would be Waller. Um, and that, that is probably what I end up doing. I think that Waller is a guy who I will prioritize as my. You like, you like him more than uh, something like, uh, like Goddard maybe. Like, like, yeah, I, well, I do like him more than Goddard. He's had some huge, huge games against the chargers in the past too. Um, right. Right. And, and, and I think maybe he gets a little bit overlooked this week. Waller, Waller's a freak. I mean, like he's a, uh, he's yeah, awesome. He's, he's awesome. He just, the only thing is going to, they're going to say, okay, well now with Ren, both Renfro and Adams, they're going to, you know, focus less on Waller or whatever. I still think Waller could get a ton of work, especially against the Chargers team that gave up, I think like four of the biggest games of fantasy all year to, to tight ends last season, even with a good defense. I think that they're going to, they're going to use the tight ends a lot. You know, before I forget, I mean, another good tight end that we didn't mention back from that Philly game I, is, is, is Hawkinson, right. From, from Detroit. Um, uh, yeah. So, okay. So then, and then you got, you know, Casey, Arizona, you know, we, we did this, we did, we did this a lot last year. We just kind of just kept forgetting to play KC, you know, <laughs> they just, they keep on putting up a million points, you know, it, it's um so yeah, Tyreek Hill is gone, but you know, Patrick Mahomes is last I checked uh, is still there. Um, and you get, you know, and you get Juju Smith Schuster now in the mix. It's a it's a you know, it's a little different profile of 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 stuff. You know, you don't have that Tyreek Hill guy to stretch the field. Um, but something tells me that uh he'll be that, fine. 
that Mahomes <laughs> is going to be just fine. You know, yep. I don't know where the the targets are going to go with these other guys. I don't know if if MVS is going to get enough uh, enough action, whatever it is. And boy, if they're going to get Josh Gordon in, are we going to play him one of these days? I, mean, I don't know. I, I have to. I, I really haven't do, do, dived into it. I'm literally just looking at the roster here. I just see. Yeah. I, I got. I got. I got. Uh, I, I know that last I heard, Travis Kelsey was still <laughs> still on the team, right? Um, and we're talking about all these tight ends. Boy, my, why would be? Why can't we just play Travis Kelsey with Mahomes? Uh, remember, this Arizona team plays wicked fast. I mean, listen, they still play really fast. KC is more than happy to get in a shootout with anybody. Um, and on the other side, and this this could be this could be one of those situations we talked about where you just play Murray, you know, and and, and just hope he just generates all the offense. It's possible. Mm-hmm. The the one value guy that's standing out is um is what is Rondell Moore. Okay, yeah. so he's the guy that's standing out. He's going to be popular, I presume. Um, yep. uh, but he's the guy that's standing out as far as the the, the top target for Arizona to play in, in a stack. Um, uh, I, I guess James Conner's got to be thought about, I suppose. Um, but I think that this game. Well, I don't know what I don't even know what the total. I presume it's in the fifties. I mean, it's got to be up there, right? Yeah. Um, so, so these last two games and this one in particular, I mean, this is again. I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather spend my money getting more combinations of that of this game than screw around with like with like a Jets Baltimore stack. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like to I waste my that. waste my fifteen dollar or my five dollars. Uh, even, even though I was going to play ten lineups in there in 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 the, in the one fifty max and the five dollars, I just think that that I could spend my fifty dollars better like on ten other combinations of this game. That then taking that one one percent owned shot in the uh, on on like a uh, on like the on like a Flacco stack or something, which is just never winning. You know what I mean? I, I, Although I just, it won the first week last year, he did. Win I get it. So good, maybe we higher last year. Good, maybe we higher on. But I think I think we shouldn't think too much. I think we should play a lot of this. Game. Yeah, I think so too. It's just going to be so, the ownership is so condensed in this game that it it, it feels like a game I want to stack. But outside of more as a value. Um, I think I think both like it's just it's speculative, but I, I think both running backs for KC are really strong plays here. And I, I don't know if I can do the McKinnon as a backup running back on the week one, but CEH could have a monster game here. Yeah. Um, and then I like James Conner and more. Those are my favorite. But uh, I will be playing some Juju. I just don't know if I want to play a 30 percent on Marquise Brown, who literally just never got there with a good quarterback in Lamar Jackson when he was getting targets because he drops every ball. So I, I'm in. I'm into the Rondale Moore, uh, Juju thing. It's just going to be owned. And I think if you're going to use the the low owned guys here, I think that MVS is probably my favorite of the uh, of the weird guys. I don't know why he would be that much different of a play than Rondale Moore. He also has home run hitting ability. He also drops a lot of balls. Um, but I think in KC here, they might have found a way to use him. And uh, I don't. I don't worry about KC's offense. The last time that Tyreek Hill didn't play a game. In the first quarter, I believe uh, Mahomes threw for 280 yards and four touchdowns in the first quarter um, without Tyreek Hill. I'm not worried about Mahomes and all that. And I think if you're picking between these quarterbacks, you kind of have to pick Kyler Murray just because of the running upside. And I think he's a tremendous play. This is the the game you want to target the most. But there's a million other plays and other games that you can get different with. So I, I don't think that you, you need to say, OK, well, we're going to. And also, like, there's a different plays in this game. I mean, no one's going to play CEH. And why can why at fifty four hundred can he he put up twenty five fantasy points in this matchup? So it's definitely a good one. I have a bunch of priorities for the for the week of guys who who stand out for a bunch of different reasons. Yeah, um, let's hear it. This game stands out the most for me, but uh, I do have Waller, Irv Smith as my tight end guys that I like a lot. Uh, then then I'm going to scatter a bunch more, and I uh, I do have Rondale Moore, uh, Aaron Jones, Adam Thielen, Michael Pittman, Najee Harris, Joe Mixon. Uh, Nick Chubb and McCaffrey, uh, uh, CEH and Connor Kamara and Michael Thomas. And they're all, I like them. And, 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 oh, and Saquon Barkley. Those, I like all those guys for very different reasons, but, uh, some of them in ownership, some of them just the matchup. Some of them, I think are being undervalued. And uh, I think it's a great week to spread out. You, you know, you know what, um, as I'm looking through my, uh, my one-offs here, you touched on most of them, but there's one guy that's, uh, it's really cheap that I didn't mention when we talked about this team because I, I it wasn't really going to play him, um, this team. But I will mention, you might hear a lot about it. I don't know. I'm seeing a really good point per dollar projection on Jahan Dots, Dotson from Washington mm-hmm. um, at 3,400. So if you do like that Washington game, um, and I see him currently, I mean, this is early, but I see him at 7% ownership. And 
when you see you got 3,400, 7%, that probably means you're going to end up 15. <laughs> um, right, right, right. Uh, I mean, like, why, why, why own them at all? You know what I mean? Um, and Tony, I mentioned, I really, you really didn't leave anybody for me. Um, <laughs> you mentioned right. Rashad Bateman earlier. I like, I really, I really like the, the, um, uh, the, the, the Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's really good. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I guess that. Listen, we, you know, we did mention we mentioned a we mentioned a bunch of tight ends, so it's probably a good tight end week. But there are other guys like we didn't mention from the tight end position. Like Cole Komet showed a lot of talent last year. It's kind of a tough spot for him in San Francisco, but um, just watch for him. And we mentioned Arizona. I mean, Zach Ertz. It wasn't too recently we would have to pay seven K for him, and he's forty four hundred in in the fastest game of the day. Um, so who knows? Um, any 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 defenses that you yeah I, I like as a cheap defense I like Washington um I think that you could I think that you could argue for the Giants um I think that as much as like I, I like Hertz's fantasy upside I think the Lions are completely reasonable those are probably my favorite defenses yeah I, I will say this um I'm gonna reiterate what I said every every week last week with defenses I really think that if there was any position where you you should never that not never that you shouldn't be overweight too much and that would be on defense um there's just so much yeah, so very, much variance in defense yeah. um and uh uh i have the commanders as the number one like values you know defense and they're probably going to get owned but then i got I mean, this obviously they can't be thirty five percent. It's a really early projection, but but um, but the Bengals are going to get uh, are going to get uh, you're, they're they're going to get used. Um, I have the Colts as a good as a good defense. Mm -hmm. I have the Titans against the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, but I think overall, like I said, if, if I have more than more than thirty percent of a defense, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at it. Yeah, I think that would be a little too much for any yeah. defense, unless there's like somebody like you're like quarterback number four and all the receivers are hurt or something yeah, <laughs> something, time yeah. Or something like that but it should be fun i look forward to talking about it more as the week goes on we've got some time to make some decisions here yep. Sheet, anything else before we get out of here no so be on the lookout so tomorrow we're gonna do um but tomorrow's wednesday right so we got to think of how we want to handle like thursdays you know do we want to bother with a, a a preview of the showdown slate or do we want to just do that as part of live uh we have to i guess it depends like, on I how heavy like the it depends on how heavy the baseball slate is i guess right i mean yeah and the baseball slates will be lighter thursdays going forward because of the night game and the ratings so well, well you know what we're gonna do we're, we're gonna play it by ear yep and and, and we'll give uh you know we'll, we'll 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 experiment with all of it you know um absolutely but uh yeah i i i, I uh I'm going to probably be a little chalky this week because of, you know, like I said, um, I like, I like four or five games and, um, and most of them are the games that other people like, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm going to fade probably that green Bay Minnesota game, which people are going to play. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can get a little different there by not playing that. And um, I think, I think the one game I might talk myself into uh, is maybe the Pittsburgh game. That that could be the game I talk myself into too. Interesting, I like get, that actually. To get, I to get different, that. to get different. Um, yeah, and I'm still I'm still thinking about this Washington Jacksonville game because the more we start talking about some of these individual plays, this maybe maybe you're right, maybe the field is right. But this is the the obvious sneaky game. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the the little cloud and the and the rain is is a little annoying. Um, but one one thing about it is that um, like like if people have been playing DFS a long time, they they know this. Weather is not that big of a deal unless you have a bunch of wind. You know, like if you have a bunch of wind, right. that that really does unless you have a total quagmire or whatever. But it's funny, even the quagmires you see, like you think like the quagmires and the snowstorms are gonna gonna hold stuff down, but all that happens is the defense just starts slipping and these guys break into the open field and they score a freaking shit ton anyway. So right. um uh you know, watch Vegas and watch the projections. If if if, if the weather's gonna matter, the total's gonna drop. You know, it's just the bottom line. You know, it, it's it's just the most efficient freaking sport as far as for the, the far as the lines go. The lines I mean, are incredible. Just, yeah, they, they're. I mean, really it's just it's just it's just kind of difficult. So, um, that's uh, I think that was a pretty good start, right? Yeah, I think yeah, this is fun. I'm looking forward to to a nice big season. Hopefully, we can win a million dollars this week.
Well, hey, watch for tomorrow. We're going to be doing a special one with Jordan from SaberSim where we focus more on how to use SaberSim to build these lineups. This way, when we run my builds on SaberSim and it gives me zero of the teams I wanted, I can get all pissed. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll look at that tomorrow. All right. Sounds good, buddy. Good luck to everyone today. And uh, let's, uh, or this weekend, let's uh, make some money. Talk to you guys soon.